Now looking at some wireless technologies, ways to communicate with no wires over a network. And all of these methods work using waves. So to be able to communicate through the air with no wires, you need to use waves. And here, this squiggle is of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is including things like X-rays and visible light and infrared and radio waves. In this video, I'm gonna make reference to a few of these. If you haven't got to learn this in detail, but at this end, the radio waves have got longer frequencies, or shorter frequencies are where it gets tighter when we go towards microwaves and so on. So, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the most two obvious and well-known, I would say, wireless technologies, both use radio waves. So relatively long frequency waves going through the air. Now Wi-Fi, as you'll know, is used to create fairly small home, usually networks or small business networks. We might call local network networks or LANs, local area networks. And you have a wireless router or wireless access point broadcasting Wi-Fi signals which other devices can connect to and exchange data wirelessly. So Wi-Fi hasn't got a, a massively big range unless you've got lots of wireless access points, usually for home and small business environments. Bluetooth is for even shorter range networks. Bluetooth is meant just for an individual person. So we're talking five, 10, 20 meters, whereas Wi-Fi is usually a bit bigger. So a common example nowadays is having a phone using Bluetooth to connect up to something like AirPods or some other wireless headphones. So it's, you're not going through Wi-Fi. Bluetooth is its own technology. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi use both different frequencies. So they are separate concepts, but very similar. Bluetooth will have its own network between say your AirPods and your phone. It's very short range. And these are what we call ad hoc networks. An ad hoc network is where you can just create it straight away, no fuss, no setup. You can, turn, you can turn Bluetooth on and off. You can connect to somebody else's AirPods really easily, somebody else's headphones. You can connect up to your Apple Watch or whatever it is really quickly with no fuss. Whereas Wi-Fi, there is a bit of fuss. You've got to set up a wireless router. You've got to connect via a password. It's a little bit more formal. Bluetooth is meant to be really flexible, really short term. So ad hoc, you're setting up with no fuss, no difficulty. Now going through some slightly lesser known technologies. These ones working towards the higher end of the frequencies. Um, not that it matters too much, but it does change their properties. So they do work differently to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because they've got higher frequencies. So microwaves are one of these. Now a microwave, you'll know from a kitchen, right? a kitchen microwave, which cooks food, uses the same waves as used in microwave networks. So a microwave network has got nothing to do with food or cooking food, but you can use microwaves, which are a type of wave, to communicate messages, often over quite long distances. So here is a tower with microwave transmitters and receivers sending it over quite a long distance. Now microwave networks have got a high bandwidth. They can send a lot of data, but actually, it sounds a bit silly, but they're quite badly affected by bad weather. So when it's raining or snowing or heavy fog, actually that can really block the waves. It absorbs the waves and so the waves don't arrive properly. So these networks are very fancy and cost a lot of money, but if it rains, actually that can massively affect how well they can communicate. They are used quite widely though. What is not used so widely nowadays is infrared. Infrared again is another area of the spectrum uses light which is not visible to the human eye. You've probably seen infrared cameras which show different uh, temperatures and things like that. But they can be used for quite short range networks, not very often because Bluetooth is sort of overtaken. But one common example still in use are remotes. So if you you know, have a remote like this, if you see there'll be a little kind of light at the top. If you press a button, you can't see the light come on. It's not visible, but your TV can detect it and uh, respond to the input. So quite short range, not very usable, um, but remotes are an example. Wireless networks can also use lasers to communicate. So laser networks are like fiber, as in the fiber optic wire, but just without a wire. So fiber optic uses light, pulses of light to send data. Laser networks do the exact same, 
but just through the air, not through a wire. Now laser networks are good because they can send a lot of data, they've got high bandwidth, but again, they can be quite affected by weather. If it's raining or foggy, the light gets blocked or gets weakened, and so it's harder to arrive. Often lasers are used in space, where there are fewer issues of weather and things which are gonna block the laser. And actually all three of these networks have got issues because all require line of sight communication. What that means is the transmitter and the receiver have to be in view of each other. If there is a blockage, like in this case a mountain, or any object which is gonna block them, they cannot communicate. So that's why the towers for things like microwaves are really, really tall to try and avoid any blockages. That's why if you try and use your remote from a different room, your TV won't be able to respond to it. So all of these are fine, but just not good when you've got blockages. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are not perfect, but because they've got lower frequencies, they are able to diffract and move around barriers and also go through certain objects. Whereas these three are not quite as good in that regard. And you might get around that issue by using a, a, a what, sixth or seventh type of communication method, which is satellite communication. So satellites are objects floating through space and satellites can be used to relay messages from two points on earth. So you've got two, we call ground stations, each can communicate with a satellite and some messages can, go, can get sent through the satellite. And you might do this because there might be a blockage between the two and so you can't use lasers or you can't use microwaves or so on. So to give a, another example, obviously the earth is curved and so if you are communicating over a long distance and haven't got a wire between the two, you may choose to go wirelessly and use a satellite in space instead of um, going through you know, via a viral wire. So a satellite, because it's so far beyond the atmosphere, you're able to use it to relay messages which otherwise you would not be able to send via things like microwaves or so on. Another technology, the last one we're gonna cover in this video is GSM and similar technologies. So GSM stands for Global System for Mobile Communications. Not the most catchy acronym. GSM used to be known as 2G. So we nowadays are much more familiar with things like 3G and in particular 4G and increasingly 5G. So these are all technologies which enable mobile phones to connect to the network, to the internet in particular, using what we call cellular networks. And we'll talk more in future videos about what cellular means, but for now, it's another way for devices to connect wirelessly using a separate network to the standard internet and using systems already in place, known as 4G, 5G in particular nowadays. GSM is the old fashioned version, but 4G and 5G use the same ideas as set out in GSM and 3G.